Welcome to the Conjure Community Lunchtime AMA, a weekly chance to go a little deeper with some of your favorite CC artists. I'm Ethan Fisher, Head of Customer Relations for Conjure Community, brother of CC co-founder Aaron Fisher and Magic Adjacent Layperson. Um, today we have magician, co-architect of the recent CC Club Deck, co-founder of Conjure Community, animal lover, musician, and friend, Adam Grace. Hey, buddy. Oh, it feels so good. All those accolades pouring over my body. Things started to get tingly when you said those wonderful things about me. How are you? I'm doing well. I, um, I'm i excited that wands. you're back. You brought two wands? I did. Double wands all the way. That's right. We're going to play air drums for about an hour now. Yeah. If, yeah. Uh, just in case you guys know, that was the one thing he said to me today. He said, uh, yeah, he, you're going to bring him one, right? That was it. There was no uh, more information. So I brought two. I wanted to be over-prepared. That's what overachievers do. Overachiever and proud of it. Uh, let's, okay, so I, I, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to put it out beforehand that I would like some questions for you um, to try so I'm not just um, constantly scrambling the whole time and I can pay attention to you. So, um, but before we do that, let me ask you, in the world of CC, is anything new happening? Yeah, like, uh, like the newest thing I can say that's happening is uh, sleep. Like, that's pretty new. Uh, we haven't had a lot of that lately. But, um, you know, I got eight full hours of sleep last night. Eight! That's why I'm so exuberant today. That's why I feel wonderful. I feel like playing air drums because i got rest so yeah that's kind of new um we are working on a couple of things we have like uh we have the mats coming out some of these 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 mats are so sweet am i allowed um, to, am, am i allowed to am i allowed to show mine yeah you should show yours yeah yeah, yeah. you know like our 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 uh i think here at conjure community our dream one day is for like us to all show up you know at magic conventions in force with our CC gear. Like we have our hats and our shirts and our CC mats and our CC cards. And we just like, you know, like the rest of the world is, is like, man, these, these dudes got, got it together. Like, uh, um, we answer all the questions here. So I, I don't think I have an answer, but we did get asked by the Southern scoundrel if we had a new date yet for the summer. And I'm pretty sure we're still, working on it the southern that would be edmund apperson yes i love Ed, edmund what is up sir i love the southern scoundrel i uh i consider myself to be uh, a southern scoundrel as well so kindred spirits um yeah uh you i tell you what edmund if you can uh if you could if you could possibly visit some sort of psychic uh, who could possibly tell you what's going to happen uh, with uh, COVID. Uh, and then if we could get a little inside information about when that might uh, die down a little bit, uh, we, will, we will know a little bit more about, uh, you know, when we should book the convention. So it's really just all riding on the fact that we thought by now that this whole thing would be over. Like we thought the whole COVID thing would be over and we'd be having a convention or at least a date. Uh, however, it just, um, it just keeps to be the, it keep, it, it's the gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? Uh, hey, I'm enjoying it. School starts in a week and man, it, it's gonna be fun. I, um, I, I don't know what that's, I can't even tell you what that must be like to have, uh, have your have to have your kids at home all day what's really crazy is some people have more than one um christopher <laughs> harrop says what nice wands you have i say the better to Patru patronus you with my dear <laughs> well let me show you my wand collection so well, before you do that before you do that before you do that yeah. let's do this i got this thing right yeah oh there it is yes Boom. let's see it Boom. yeah so that's the small size small. okay now yep I also got this because I am the card magician extraordinaire that I am. I got this. You ready? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Ooh, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
Ooh, that's my name. You know, when you run your finger, run your fingers over that stitching, that embroidery. It's, Doesn't it feel it's, nice? Yeah, it is. It's nice. It's, it's really solid. Like, these turned out so much better than I thought. They are beautiful. Now, I'm going to also show my mat. Right. Because I and I showed it on the show the other night. So we sort of we've been batting around a couple of options, right? We've got this, which is it's just conjure community at the at the bottom, right. which is kind of like what I uh, I decided to to go with. And then we've got this version. Show yours again so we can compare them. Uh, we've got the version that Ethan's got, which has the CC logo and the name. And I'm curious, out of everybody who's watching right now, which of these two would you actually prefer? The club moniker or the logo with your name uh, on the bottom? Also, while I wait for those answers to come in, I'll just check right here for quick, just for you guys. Just be, does, does, doesn't, doesn't fit in the bag of mystery. I apologize. That one, that one's going to stay here with me. Yeah, I don't think you can give those away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when will they be available to buy? That's not what we asked, Christopher. We asked if you want to name one or if you want a Conjure community one. Name, Clark says name probably. Michael Sproul, my name. Edmund Apperson, CC with my name. So no one, so no one is confused. Name, Chad, but only if it's spelled wrong. Um, Ah, you know, that's a really good point, because having, like, if we all were at the CC convention together, and everybody has a mat with that on it, they, they could easily get confused. Yeah, that's good. That, I hadn't yeah. thought about that yet. Good. And so, Harrop, Harrop wants one, both one on top, one on bottom. Yeah, I don't know if we can do that, because it's stitched on top. Do you, Harrop, does Harrop mean the top of the pad and the bottom of the pad, like up down here and up here, or do you mean the back? of the pad and the front because the, the back of the pad's impossible. Um, the, the way this, the, the way, and I've got a, a small one here like you do, uh, Ethan, that's what she said. Um, the, uh, the, the back of this is a, uh, is a very rugged material. Um, I, I feel like, look, I have purchased uh, thousands of dollars in mats over the years. And there's some beautiful mats out there. There really are. But these, I have never seen any quite like this. And for us to uh, finally come, you know how we are about things. It takes us forever to make decisions about stuff like this. So for us to finally find, like, the actual mat that, you know, we want to put our name on, um, you're going you're gonna to know for sure that it's the, the highest quality you've ever seen. So... Uh, I can't wait. I can't wait to release these. I think people are going to really dig them. This is the best close-up mat I've ever had, for sure. Um, okay, so I need to address a Kickstarter question that just came in. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to address it by saying, please send all your Kickstarter questions over in the Kickstarter messages section, right, Adam? Because that's where we can give you, like, the individual attention about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If you have it, so if you've if you've got an order question, like if you've ordered something on Kickstarter, or sorry, if you're a backer on Kickstarter and you've sought, like added an add-on, and like like just do us a favor. And and what we're finding out about that platform is it's not quite as user friendly as we thought. So we want to make sure we're getting everything right. So it, when you do an add-on, just send us a, a a little message on Kickstarter and say, hey, Chris Harrop here. I just added a, a brick to my order or whatever. And just let us know by dropping a, a comment. And if you have any other uh, questions that are solely based on Kickstarter or your order, yeah, put them over at Kickstarter because that's where we're doing it. But I don't mind answering general questions about Kickstarter. Uh, like, for instance, you know, if we are happy about the outcome, which I think... Oh, oh, this question just came in from Adam Grace in Tupelo, the home office. Are you surprised and happy about the outcome so far of the Kickstarter campaign from CC Club Deck, which I will model as you answer? Um, I have to say I am so shocked and surprised and just elated and relieved and uh, all those emotions rolled into one. I'm, I'm really proud of you guys. Uh, it, it felt, you know, the, the, the feeling 
of pride that happened when when that thing funded like it did it felt like i like it just felt like pure love like i felt like our members were trying to show us how much they appreciate us by making that thing a success and and we we felt it we legitimately felt it there were moments of elation there were moments of tears uh we actually recorded um some of our reactions in real time. No, you uh, didn't. I want to see that so bad. Yeah, we have. I'm going to, I'm going to, sh- we'll show it. I have to clean it up a little bit because there's a few curse words. But um, once I clear out the, you know, the F bombs and whatnot, uh, we will, we'll, we'll post it for you guys. And it's a real time blow by blow, like from the moment we launched to that. It, that's why I know it was 36 seconds when it funded because we literally, like, I looked at the, the recording that said 36 seconds and it was fully funded. So I, I was just like, we've got the whole thing though. Like, uh, and we're, we're giddy, like little school girls. It's pretty funny. And I'm Lee not- is on the, Lee's on there with us too. So it's me and Aaron and Lee all right. watching it bro. Well, I got a little lumpy here. Um, a little later in the day, it was, um, it was, it was fantastic to see. And now as they say, the work begins, right? The work um, begins. Yeah. Yeah. Begins. And, and, you know, I mentioned that earlier about Harrop, you know, adding a brick. And I do yeah. personally know that he has added way more than a brick. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Harrop's the man. Uh, is the mat going to be launched via Kickstarter as well? No, the mat's no. not going to be a Kickstarter. No, not at all. Not at all. And, and just so you guys know, you should go check the uh, Kickstarter today because we, we had a big announcement that went out today, uh, Ethan. A big update, rather. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so check this out. Um, we, you know, that that like reciprocity, like what you guys did for us. All right, so we just decided we're going to do something really badass for you. We have just released an announcement saying that every single uh, person that backed us, that bought at least one deck, is going to get an, an additional gaff card uh, that allows you to perform the Jason Dean threesome routine and if you don't know the routine it's amazing okay can, can you show it to us i don't i don't have the the gaff but i can like pantomime it so basically what what you do is you you have someone select a ca- uh, three cards right three selections and then they they're put back really fairly like so it's none of this like you're not like doing diagonal palm shifts or any of that stuff right you're like having three selections pushed back in the deck like this, like super fair, like, like boom, in, done, the deck gets set down, no slides, no nothing, okay? Then the first person or one of the first three people, you're like, oh, which, uh, you know, I actually made a prediction. I wrote it on the back of the deck. So what card did you select? And they're like, queen of hearts. And you turn it over and the deck, says queen of hearts right and then you're like uh number two what did you select and they're like uh the two spades and you're like well that's interesting because inside the box is and you pull out one card this has a whole deck but you pull out one card and you're like there's your card the two of whatever i said right and it's inside there and then for the third prediction you're like uh well I wrote yours on the back of the deck too. And they know, they know you couldn't have done that because they saw what was written on the back of the deck. It, it was the first prediction. And you take a lighter and you light it and a sh- flame shoots up. You turn it over and the prediction has changed. So it's a really, really highly visual uh, trick that requires a gaff. But we're giving that gaff to everybody at our expense. We, we uh, And Jason Dean, of course, volunteered to uh do that so that's pretty cool we're we're gonna give we're gonna give everybody that as a gift for just being so kind we also sorry let me just say one more thing we also announced that we have what's called easy add-ons today we had several people write us emails and say hey i'd like to add a brick to my order i don't really know how to do it but now we've got it in the add-on section so all you have to do is go down there and look at that chart and you can add a brick and you can get the savings that uh, 
that you know that you could have gotten in some of the other packages without paying like full price for that brick. You, I can't, I can't hear you. Are you muted? No. Okay. Yeah. If, if you're ordering, if you're doing any add-ons. Okay, your Ethan, your mic is super low. Like it went from like ten to two. How about now? Oh yeah, it's way way good. Okay. okay. Too good. Yeah. Yep, we're back. Okay, um, if you're doing any add-ons, shoot us a message at the same time just saying what you added on because we want double documentation on everything, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so uh, let me look at this. All right. Um, no, it's not – the gap is not specific to the CC deck. Oh, I'm sorry, Ethan. I didn't mean to jump it down there. I, know I was, was going to ask you that question. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. It'll, work with any, it'll work with any deck. All right, so magic wands. Yes. Okay. Yes. I asked. I asked Adam, and we can come back to the CC deck, everybody. But I had a question about wands because at the first CC summit I was at, when I was trying my hardest not to get into any magic, because I have a reputation to uphold. Yes. Um, at the very end, on the last night, we were all hanging around. I believe um, many people that are in the group were there. I started seeing you playing with a wand and doing this one thing over and over again. And um, I asked you to show it to me, and you did. But I haven't gotten it yet. So I'd like you to show it to me again. Okay. If what? you have your wand handy, if you're watching this and you have your wand handy, grab it. Or if you have a a pen, uh, a pen or pencil, it will actually work with that too. Okay. So here's the deal. Here's what you do. Uh, you start by putting your wand here in this position, and that is the thumbs on the top. Now, the idea is that you're going to end in this position, which is that the thumbs are on the bottom. Now, it's good to go ahead and get the feel for what that's going to feel like when you end, right? So you can just put it there. You can put the, yeah, so you can see that. Good. All right, so let's just start over. All right, go ahead. You just did it. Okay. Okay, so great. You're in this position, and the idea is that you want to get into that other position by just turning your hands, and that puts it underneath. And then by reversing what you just did, it's back on top. And you can reverse it back to underneath or back on top basically as much as you want. And it seems hard, or it seems like a puzzle, maybe. Like, people are like, how could you possibly do that? Maybe your thumbs are disjointed. Are you having any problem with it at all? Yes, I'm having serious problems just... I'm having serious problems figuring out what you were doing. Okay, so this is one of, <laughs> this is one of those, like, things that frustrated me when I was a kid. And it's really, it's kind of mean to do to people, I think, now, because, like... It's a, I can do something that you can't, but, uh, but I'll show you how to do it. Okay. All so right, here's right. how you do it. What's happening is it looks like that nothing's moved. Like if you didn't actually move anything, you couldn't do it. Right. right. If you kept right. your thumbs locked. So what you have to do is, uh, these, uh, let's take your right fingers. All right. They're going to come up and over. Okay. And they're going to, they're going to grab the wand and your thumb is actually going to just release as the whole thing turns around and underneath. All right. So let me show you from the other position, Ethan. Okay. okay. Take your, you're holding it from the bottom, cross your thumbs like this. Let's see. Is your right thumb underneath? Yes. Okay. And now just, Turn your left hand downwards as you rotate it around and it's knacky. All right, this is a failure. I'm gonna try I'm gonna take this video and practice later. I almost had uh, Micah come on. I wanted you to teach him. He would have yeah. done it. It took me a little while to get it. And, and when you get it when you get it with some sort of flood, like, the, like this moment here, as this hand comes over, there's an obvious thing that happens because this, the thumb is just jumping over, right? Like the thumb is obviously just 
jumping over. You really slowly what the thumb does? You might as well just be doing this. Right. Okay. You know, you might as well be just, just releasing one hand, turning it over, and putting that hand back. Because it's really all you're doing. But you're throwing, as you're turning it, you're throwing, you're, you're throwing shade. It looks like a fluid motion. Right. Right. All so, right. well, you'll have to, you'll have to practice it. It's not, you know, easy. Whatever. I quit. I'm never doing it again. <laughs> <laughs> that one always gets little kids too, because they're like, is it the wand? You're like, yes. Yes, it's totally the wand. Maybe Greg Chase's wand will. Oh. Yeah, let's see if I can do it with Greg Chase's beautiful wand. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. From one position to the other, no problem. Yeah. You know who I actually did learn this from? Uh, we had a magician in Memphis when I was a kid who had a very famous TV show. Uh, bonus points for anybody who knows his name, the very famous magician he passed away recently who had a TV show in Memphis, Tennessee when we were kids. It was a magic show. Bragging rights is the, the award. Cross the thumb. Nope. Nope. Cross your thumbs. Uh, That's what. Yeah. I mean that you can do it that way too. If you cross your thumbs and rotate, it will happen. I just have to rip. But I always end up on the top, not the bottom. So I'm doing something wrong. I'm never doing this again. You said that just a second ago. <laughs> well, as long as I have a as long as I have a wand here to throw and say that, I'll keep doing that. But I threw them all. So uh, we are we also speaking of wands, Ethan. We also were you know we also have been trying for the longest to to find our like signature CC wands. That, uh, you know, but again, this is all trial and error, right? Because you, I know you all have your favorite wands. Like for me, uh, this, this is a, a very favorite wand of mine that, that I've had since I was a child. And it's in relatively good shape uh, considering. But it's, it's light. It's, it's really lightweight. And I, I really like heavy wands. This just happens to have sentimental value, right? Um, so... I love this wand. It's a very classic, but this is just cheap. This is a cheap wand made of plastic, and there's not much to it. For our signature, like CC wands, these are hand carved wood made out of the uh, same material that uh, billiard. Uh, uh, what's it called? Q. Uh, yeah, that yeah. a Q stick is made from. Uh, hand. Uh, hand polished uh, and and all that so we've been uh, really looking into uh, getting these and they're super super heavy uh, which allows you to do stuff like the Vernon wand spins and other kinds of really cool uh, spins a lot easier because of the weight that it's got also if you're into cups and balls you can really smack stuff with it it's got that real you know it's got that real uh, uh, weight to it that allows you to do it and for some reason, I don't know if it's if it's if the weight helps or not. But you got you guys know this old illusion where you can take like a, a pencil or a pen and you can make it seem like it's a, a, a rubbery. Rub, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The rubberized look, like, like look at that. Yeah, like it looks like it's actually. Uh, um, so you know, with a bit of a heavier wand, uh, you can get you can get that. Actually, it's not working. I thought you could. Maybe it's. Too I feel. Long. I feel like wands are like whammy bars. Does that like, even look like it's rubbery at all? That, that does a little, yeah. Okay, good. I feel like wands are like whammy bars. You should use them sparingly, and to the and that's the best effect with them is to use them not that often. I like having a wand personally. Like in 3M, we learn about the importance of what a wand does for you as a magician. Yeah. Uh, but originally, I guess. You know, the history of such in street performing, Ethan, was that uh, this was as much a security device for uh, spectators who were trying to grab your money or yeah. perhaps touch your props. So a wand needed to be heavy enough so that you could whack the crap out of somebody right upside the head if they got too close or tried to steal your money or you could jab them in the ribs. So it was really, it was really a, a martial arts weapon, too. Uh, any have any uh, switch, switch, switch wands? Is that a thing? 
where you hit, they, a, button, hit a button and then and the knife comes out um yeah they they, so they, do. And they they have ones that they have ones that have built-in uh gun like ha, you know canes and ones that have, have built-in uh uh caliber where they shoot like a 22 caliber uh bullet out of it as well uh a very famous magician who uh, carried around a uh, uh, a cane a guan, loaded no, with a related loaded with a round uh, in it. Nice. Of course, this was back whenever you know you would settle things with a duel. Like I challenge you to a duel, sir. Uh, if only Alexander Hamilton had a wand. So Aaron just texted me. Uh, I don't think he knows I'm on this. I'm just going to send him a text and just say, hey, I'm on. I'm on TV right now. Um, hey, so while he's doing that, let me take a minute to just remind you guys that we are having a contest today. It's going to be two questions. You can choose one or the other. We'll get to that um, in a little bit. So hang out. Hey, um, I have some questions from the crowd um, that we got early. I have one question that has become my signature question. I don't know if I've asked you yet. I'm going to get to that right now. Um, can you use hypnosis to commit murder? Have I asked you that before? No, I've heard you ask other people um, that, and I wish I would have prepared my answer a little better. But, um, uh, you know, I heard Lee Asher say, absolutely, you can't. I, no, no. So <laughs> uh, you cannot. The uh, The... The truth about hypnosis, as far as what I have researched my whole entire life, is that you're, um, you'll only do what you're willing to already do under the power of suggestion or hypnosis. So when you watch these stage shows of, of stage hypnotists, uh, the reason they bring 100 people up on stage to begin with is because they're constantly testing to see how far people will go and how induced they are. And by induced, I mean how, uh, how available your mind is to do what is suggested to you, so how suggestible you are. And so they begin to send people off the stage that aren't suggestible. And so basically you are left with eight or 10 people out of 100 who will do just about anything, but those people would not commit murder, no. No, unless they're a murderer. Okay. Already. Like, if you're already a murderer, then yeah. Yeah, you'll commit murder. Okay. <laughs> under Great. hypnosis. Well, I can't wait till I have all these and I can make a whole video of just the answers. Um, it's good. Now, let, let, me, let, me just, uh, let me just end that by saying I have no scientific evidence to back any of that up. Oh, That's yeah. just personal opinion. Um, okay, so we have some questions from, that people submitted earlier. I don't know if they're here or not. This one comes from Nancy Anderson. Hi, Nancy. She wants to know how you balance your time and your love for magic and music, both require discipline and practice time. Yeah, so I, uh, I have a, a very uh, rigid sort of practice schedule um, and work schedule. I'm, I kind of thrive off of, uh, uh, off of schedule. I like schedule. It's good for me. Uh, and so I try, especially during COVID, while I'm working from home, uh, I try to constantly uh, make sure every day that I get in at least an hour uh, of practice on the piano and an hour of practice on music, or sorry, on magic. And so with Kickstarter happening, uh, I haven't been doing any of that uh, because we've just been fully working on it. But when I'm, when I'm in my uh, balance place, I have an hour to do both each day. And I cap it at an hour. I don't, I don't sit. Some people sit with their decks and practice for three and four hours. I did that when I was young, you know. I did all that, I did all that stuff. Like, but now when you get older, you, you, have, you start to have this stuff in your muscle memory and you can learn things faster, right? So once you have the basics down, you begin to be able to learn faster. So I can sit down with a new trick or a new idea, and within about an hour, it's all I really need to have enough, you know, to have it. So any more than that a day, not necessary. With piano, 
with music, it's the same thing. Like you've got all these chops in your muscle memory. And, uh, and, and so you're just practicing those, you're running your scales and you're practicing your three or four songs that you're working on. It, it, for me, the music and the magic is both very relaxing and it's very meditative. It always has been. So it's my outlet for relaxation. Um, I was just re-listening to my Danny Goldsmith interview because that'll be going up on the podcast. Hey, everybody, we have a podcast. Please, uh, Scott Hamill's on it today. So um, that's two shows I give you on Friday. Please like, share, and subscribe. That would be great. Uh, Danny Goldsmith talked a lot about meditation, um, and I found it very interesting. That's my meditation plug. Get a mantra. Um, uh, Chad says... Oh, I think we know the answer to this. If you had to choose between magic and music, which would you choose and why? Very interesting. That's my meditation plug. Uh, which would I choose? Um, well, I think you've chosen, a, right? <laughs> it's a lot like, you know, it's a lot like asking, um, I think he, what he means, he, I don't think he means professionally. I, I think he means it's like a desert island question, right? So if I had to give one up. But it's a lot like asking, which would you rather lose, your right hand or your left? Make your choice, sir. Yeah. Uh, it, it, I, I, need them, I need them both. Um, and so if forced to choose, uh, I have already been a professional <clears throat> magician. And I, or sorry, I've already been both, actually. And uh, as a musician, I did that. I've been there. I did that. I went on tour for years. I played the biggest stages in the world, opened up for greats, uh, you know, and, and, and I accomplished a lot of those things. I had a hit song uh, in, over in the UK. I, uh, you know, we had, we, we did, I did, I accomplished the like, sort of bucket list of things that I had set out with the exception of like winning a Grammy. We, we didn't do that. But um, so, I, you know, at this point, like I have given up music professionally. I still do it as a hobby, but I don't pursue that as a means to make money. Uh, at all anymore really is that last studio jam you're working on been released yet no i've been working on a uh i've been working on a cd for, or cd i've been working on an album for uh 10 years uh like i put out an album when i was 23 years old uh an album called faso nation which you can find it on like cd baby but it's really funny uh to listen to because we didn't have a lot of recording capabilities we did it like in the garage and stuff but um, it's a pretty hilarious album, actually. Uh, a lot of good songs on it and stuff. But um, I, for about 10 years, I've been working on my next album. I don't know when I'll ever drop it or if I will, because uh, it's like I've got, you know, they, I, I want it to be like at least all the songs to be equally as good. And that's really hard to do, you know? Well, just make them all mediocre songs and, you know, they can all be at the same level. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But the one you were talking about with me with Aaron last time for that artist, you were not allowed to tell me. Um, has that been released that you know of? Oh. Um, was it WAP? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it still hasn't been released. Okay. No. In fact, uh, the COVID thing has changed a lot of release dates on everything, sure. including all our favorite movies like – like, you know, what's amazing about that, dude, is that I'm, they're actually like Marvel is actually starting to put some release dates on things. And I'm, and I almost am like, is it going to actually happen? I think they put out a release date on Tenant, honestly, that big Dave, um, Christopher Nolan movie. And they did their best this weekend. They released all the Rocky movies they are in the theater right now. It's hard to resist for me, but I'm not going... <laughs> Um, uh, before we get to what I like to call a section of uh, questions with George, because George Madrid asked you like eight questions. I got, yeah, I'm, I'm reading I, one of his right now. It's really funny. I have an email and support about someone who ordered a, a ringtone trick and the mm -hmm. batteries came and they were um, corroded. Yeah, but you, you, didn't order, <laughs> you didn't order from me. No, no, I mean, no. That... No. But he, or, well, he voiced his disappointment. Yeah. And it's even I know it's one of those things that's like <laughs> ringtones, but no one's even using ringtones. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. really outdated. But um <laughs> the principle, I mean you could use the principle for a lot of things. 
the the thing is is that you know I do get emails every now and then about those tricks, but it's kind of like like if you buy a Martha Stewart frying pan at Walmart, like do you re, do you do you email Martha Stewart to return it or do you go to Walmart? Uh, you go to Walmart. So basically, like I think he probably bought that from eBay or uh, Illusionist, maybe. So it's like unfortunately they're not Conjurer community products. If I had one, I'd send you one. I promise. I don't have any of them. I don't have any. You know? um, all right. Well, so let's go to these questions with George. He said, okay. first of all, what's up with the close-up pads? We already answered that. Um, That's right. CC panelists keep hinting at big stuff to come. Is there anything we can get a tip on today? We gave you all the tips. Right? No, we actually didn't. Um, there's that one other thing, Ethan. The, 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 uh, the beef tips? Uh, think, no. really, think really hard. Is it something I've been told about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You've been told about it. Okay. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, he's got a, a good question as well as putting up for a monthly show. The Boston magic lab is working to build a strong community in Baston. CC has done a remarkable job with this. Can you give any advice to help their efforts in Baston? Uh, advice, um, maybe, maybe you could, uh, clarify what, what kind of advice you want, because is it, uh, you're looking for more viewership or is it, are you looking for more, uh, uh, other magicians to participate? Are you looking to, are you looking to make the actual online show better? Like what, you know, which facet of it are you actually, uh, wanting advice on? Uh, so maybe you could clarify that, that question a little bit and I'd be glad to answer it. All right, while he's doing that, I'll skip to his uh, next question. Uh, I figure you'll be able to answer this if anyone can. What's the deal with Aaron Fisher? The blow, okay, so <laughs> good question. <laughs> what is the deal with Aaron Fisher? We got a lot of blowback. I, I actually removed that video. Uh, so, you know, we did an afternoon astonishment video about Paul Daniels. Yeah. And we literally, it was just a test because we were watching the numbers, the viewership on those afternoon astonishments. When we were putting them on YouTube, we were watching and, you know, it wasn't really growing. And we were like, let's try something controversial and let's see if it brings in more viewers because controversy always brings in more viewers. It just does. It equals so, yeah. we, so, we, so we did this show and we were just kidding we were joking the entire time but we were like what is the deal with paul daniels like we were like we don't understand why people love paul daniels so much and it got a little while we got a little uh i'd say we took it a little too far a little and, after showy yeah but what's funny about that is that it had more comments than any other afternoon astonishment it had more blowback too i finally removed it because it just uh you know, I don't, I, I don't want to leave something out there that's not really actually representative of our community. And our community is not negative in any way. It never has been. Um, you know, we're a positive, safe place. And, and, you know, that was just a goof. That was just a test uh, just to see an, what the analytics would be on it and stuff. Uh, but, you know, best to be removed. But, you know, honestly, I don't know what the deal is with Aaron Fisher. He's an enigma. He's a mystery locked inside a, a box made of lead. You cannot see through it, even with Superman's eyes. Well, I know. It's the one secret I have in Condor community that no one else knows, and I'm keeping it. And George's last question, Aaron knows I'm kidding, right? No, he doesn't. You know, we can never tell with you, George. Yeah. You're you're literally smarter than all of us combined. So sometimes we don't know when you're being serious. Uh, I also saw his comment where he said that, and I quote, "Why don't you go ahead and read it?" But I I'm reading off something else. The hit song in the UK one. Uh huh. Is a hit song in the UK sort of like when I had a girlfriend at another school? No. <laughs> Have you seen Donnie Darko? Heard that song at the end? Uh, Mad World? 
like Gary Jules cover. That's why I love Adam song. That's why I love George so much. Yeah. That comment right there. He's probably, doing um, Mar- he's probably doing martinis right now. He could be. Yeah. No, it was a, if you ask Harrop, Harrop knows because uh, he lived in the UK or he lives in the UK. Uh, Mad world was a freaking sensation over there. Uh, hey man, I found my coloring drawings of Frank the Bunny. It reached over here too, buddy. Yeah, it, it, I mean, we you know we got to we got to go on tour with Bob Dylan because of yeah. that. Yeah, Bob. So that song was epic. It changed my life uh, tremendously. And Bob Dylan's a member of the Traveling Wilburys. Just that so you too. know. All One right. Degree of separation, bro. It's so close. Well, we've completed this portion of the show, the audio portion. Adam, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Uh, I would like you to uh, stick around for a moment. Someday this might be a a podcast. Hey, did you guys know we have a CC podcast? You could like, share, subscribe. You could go on there and listen to, what's his name? The Canadian? Hamill? Scott Hamill today? The Canadian. Um, The Canadian. I want to have both of them on soon together. They want to come on together. Clearview and Hamill. That's going to be fun. Um, they want to talk about screwing up and burning off uh, Hamill's hands. Yeah, that was All right. scary. Now we're in the after show. Adam brought us a video clip. I want to see it. Oh, boy. Okay. So I don't, I, don't, I don't think I've ever shown this before, so I'm going to show this for the first time. Um, people always ask to see a footage of me uh, – when I was performing uh, professionally a lot. And as I got older, I didn't have as much footage. I have tons of footage from like the Magic Castle, but I, at some point I stopped uh, recording a lot of the public shows I did or the private shows that I did, but I recorded a lot of them when I was younger. So I have a tasty treat for you guys today. Um, This is Footage of me performing my uh, famous bird act at age, uh, I, was four, I was 14, let's see, yeah, I was 14 years old. This is going to be right. amazing. Yeah, here we go. Let me share, share it with you. Don't laugh. I'm going to fast forward past the, uh, past the interview part. Because it's Aww. just it's just really bad. I mean, unless you really want to watch it, but uh, I'll just get to the act. Okay, so this this was my this was my first bird act that I put together as a kid, and uh, and I did this act for a long, 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 long time, um, probably two or three years. Here we go. Thank you. 
<laughs> oh my god. Your mic cut out again, buddy. It's cut out again? Yeah. Now? Yeah, you're good. All right. Sorry about that. Baby face grace is what they're calling you. Baby face. 14 years old, baby. 14 years old. That was great. Man. If anything needs a 4K update. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we need to update that act. Yeah. No, I will never be doing a bird act ever again. But uh, it, it, it really, like, that was, that was the very first act I remember. I workshopped that for, like, six months and trying to get all those beats down and everything. I mean, it was really, like, it was crazy, man. Like, that, that act, trying to train the doves. Like, you didn't have to train them to do much, but you did have to make them sit there. Um, and when I watched that act, it's so funny because, like, I had you – you can, you can tell I really loved – I really enjoyed doing magic. Like, I enjoyed performing magic. But it, it's not particularly good, you know. Um, I like I that song. Was, was that a song? Um, Did you produce that song? <laughs> no, that that was a legitimate uh, song that I'm pretty sure I probably should have paid some licensing to because it appeared on television. Uh, well, Janet Jackson will just have to do without that money. Yeah, was that her song? No, but it sounded like it. <laughs> It was like, it's some really random or uh, new kids on the block or obscure something. band that nobody would ever collect residual royalties um, from. Then that the ones are calling, coming in like, like uh, falling water. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. Uh, Adam, thanks for coming on. Hang out while I do this contest and then we'll, uh, we'll go, buddy. Okay. Thanks. Um, buddy. Thanks for having me on.